Hello guys, how are you doing today? Just get ready because today is a story day. Hi. 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 You know when you travel, you end up with a lot of stories to tell. Not all trips are smooth because things can go wrong easily when you travel. At the time, it's so stressful. But in the future, when you look at it, it can be really funny. Since now we are all at home, I asked some of my travel blogger friends to tell us some funny stories that they never ever told anyone before. I'm going to share my own story at the end, but before that, let's go to Cash and Sabrina and listen to their story. Sabrina, a funny story. <laughs> uh, do you remember that one time where we were in Flensburg in Germany? Yeah, we were <laughs> on a night out in Flensburg in the summer, a beautiful little harbor town on the border with Denmark. Uh, we had a few drinks that night. We had a lot of drinks, like a lot. <laughs> Classic harbor town, going from pub to bar to bar, and then we end up at the hostel at and 12, 30, 1 o'clock. The Zeman's house. Yes. <laughs> so and you have to you have to imagine it. We had a private room, and it was an old old how do you say that old um, dormitory for. Seamen. For seamen, they used to live there. Uh, With very, very thick, very, very thick wooden doors. Yeah. And we passed out immediately. And that was the problem. Like, I think two hours later, <laughs> two hours later, I was obviously still, everything was. <laughs> and uh, I need to pee, like, really, really, really hard. So I was like. <sighs> and I opened the door and I closed the door. And then I realized I'm not in my bathroom. <laughs> She was outside the the bedroom of the hostel, of our bedroom, in the corridor. And the uh, worst thing was... I, I was half naked. So I had my panties on and I was like... Cash, let me inside. Thick Cash. door. Yeah. Thick door. <laughs> thick door. I'm sound asleep. I'm out. I'm completely out. And I, I, I couldn't hear a thing. And how long were you not knocking that door for? I was knocking for half an hour. I had blood on my knuckles. And at some point I got so desperate because I needed to pee and I was naked. <laughs> I was so sad. desperate. I was like, it's open sad. the f***ing door. <laughs> and the people came out of like out of the rooms. Everyone came out, but not cash. And I was like, <sighs> so someone gave me like an oversized t-shirt. So and then suddenly after wear. knocking for God knows how long, I finally... Like, you know, when you're sleeping and suddenly, you, you, is this a dream? Is it, is it reality? <laughs> and, and then I see her crying with blood all of her fingers and you didn't open the door, I was naked. And it was like, I, I felt so bad. Now we can yeah. laugh about it. Yeah, no, I was really, and the thing is, I didn't wear my contact lenses, obviously, because it was a night. So I had no idea who saw me that night, half naked, crying with blood all over my hand. <laughs> So I didn't dare to go to the breakfast room on the next next day because I had no idea who saw me and I felt so embarrassed. <laughs> so, guys, there's our funny story. I'm Cash about the Traveler. Sabrina. <laughs> Sabrina Travel Eat <laughs> Thanks for listening to our funny story. You guys are hilarious. Oh my God, I wish I was there. Just like, oh my God, just watch out next time that you go. Don't get too drunk or just make sure the toilet is somewhere close. <laughs> it's so funny. But now it's time to hear Olivia's story. Hello guys, this is Olivia Digio and I'd like to thank Mansure for challenging us to tell you some funny travel stories. At the moment we're not traveling, so it's like quarantine lifestyle. So this is such a, I don't know, refreshing content. I have this funny story uh, from Thailand. I was traveling at that time with someone, with my partner. So we were transiting. So we had been transiting for like 20 hours. I, I didn't get like a lot of sleep. I was super tired. So after 20 hours of travel, we get to visa on arrival. And I discover that, well, I ha I've previously quickly checked if I need a visa on arrival. But anyways, I get there and they say, you need one. And you need this whole list of documents, like a photo, um, 
printed and uh, Thailand money, like bots, they're called. So I didn't have any of that and it took me like forever to try like get my photo run across the airport. I didn't have um, Thailand bots so I had to borrow off of someone who was staying in the queue and they kindly offered it to me. And whatever, I get with all these documents, I'm super super tired and then this police officer, um, she starts asking me so many questions and I am literally the worst person you would like to travel with. Like honestly I'm the worst person because I, I just like start, if someone asks me something, even like when they check my bag or something, I say something that I haven't done or like it's, it's super weird, I don't know if you guys have that, but like if someone asks me, I start saying a lot of shit <laughs> that I shouldn't. So anyway, she starts asking me questions, how you got there, I was like, well, we got from this bus and from this train and from blah blah blah, from Singapore, from blah blah blah, and she was like, hmm, how did you actually get here? Because our journey there was quite long by land, uh, and um, by land and then by plane. And then she asked me, so how are you getting out of Thailand? And I was like, I don't know, oh my, my train, my boat, like, I have no idea. Where are you going? She says. I don't know yet, because we didn't know yet. Um, but then she asked, so what are you doing in Thailand and where are you staying? And I started saying like, we're gonna stay at this hotel. Um, we're working with that hotel. And like, oh my God, the moment I said that, she looks at me like, suspect is armed. Because you know, you're not allowed to work in Asia. Foreigners are not allowed to, unless you have like a special permit, work permit. And we were actually invited to stay as uh, vloggers and blogger. Um, in, in this hotel. So, oh my god, once I started saying that, it was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, this is like such an illegal thing to say. You're not supposed to say this if you want to get the visa. So my ex-partner nudges me and says like, oh my god, shut up, this is illegal to say. So it's super weird and then she continues asking me questions like, uh, how did you get the ticket? Like, show me the tickets. I didn't have any tickets. My, my phone battery had died. Zero, 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 zero. So I was just like, I don't know, starting to talk so much stuff that I shouldn't. It was so, oh my God. In the end, after like an hour or I don't know, she pitied me, I think, because I was almost crying, I was so tired. And I was so afraid, I don't know why, because I get this feeling in visa on arrivals. Anyways, this is my story. I don't know how much funny it is. I hope you do consider it funny. Thank you for this chance of telling um, quickly some travel stories and have fun in your isolation days. Oh, Olivia, I'm glad they let you in. But are you sure you weren't drunk and you were sober completely? Next time, watch out when you're at the border. And now it's time to go to Angel. Hi, Angel Christina here. And this is my funny travel story. When we were on honeymoon, we visited Ubud in Bali. And in Ubud, there is a monkey forest. And besides the many funny stories that happened with the monkeys trying to steal our everything from sunglasses to water to food to clothes, at a point we continued walking and at the time I actually had teal turquoise hair. I was not aware even though I knew that um, from that part of the world they find it very fascinating, but I wasn't aware that it is that fascinating because at a point my husband, my fresh husband and I were looking at this beautiful waterfall and this um, lovely woman, most probably from the region, just tapped me in the shoulder and was completely fascinated and was jumping up and down. She was speaking in her language. I have no idea what she was saying. And I tried to understand that she wanted to take a photo because I looked like her favorite animation character from manga or some sort of other thing and I wasn't sure so we weren't communicating at all and then her family and her group of friends came all around me for some funny weird manner they kind of not pushed my husband out but my husband ended up, ended up being far away and actually I looked at him and asked him to take photos or film it I'm not sure what he did and then she took out her phone and showed me this particular character. And indeed, I actually looked a bit similar, even though I was a bit more tanned, especially in Bali. Um, and she just wanted to take a photo with me so that she can share it with her friends that she felt she physically met the character that she admires most in the animations. 
I felt that was actually a bit funny because I obviously color my hair because I have fun, but it's interesting how other people see you like a little hero or a little god for them. And we were just literally chilling in the monkey forest, breathing in deeply and having some fresh air. Wow, that's an amazing story. I should confess, I really, really like your pink hair. If I saw you in the street and I didn't know you, I would have asked you to take a selfie with it, you know? Your pink hair makes me really happy. Now it's time to hear Sven's story from his trip to China. Hey Monsieur and everyone else who's watching over there, this is Sven from Svenywhere and I want to share with you a very funny travel moment while I was traveling around in China. In China, the case is that where I come, and as long as my girlfriend isn't around, a lot of people want to get on a picture and I get a lot of attention over there, which is sometimes a bit weird. But we were exploring the Hengdian World Studios, which is the biggest film studios in China. And there's a bridge over there, which you can cross, which is like a challenge bridge with loose platforms. And yeah, if you don't cross this bridge in a good way, then you will fall down in the water. So there were some kids exploring this bridge and they were a little bit afraid. So I told my girlfriend, yeah, they shouldn't walk over it because if you just do it slowly, then you will fall down in the water and you have to run. So she said, well, if you know it that well, just cross the bridge yourself. So there I went. I crossed this bridge successfully with a large crowd watching this, all cheering when I reached the end. And then I wanted to walk back over the normal bridge because, yeah, I did it once. I'm not going to prove myself a second time. But yeah, they were all motivating. No, 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 don't come back the normal way. Just cross the bridge again and reach us back. So, okay, I made this mistake of crossing this bridge another time. While I was running, I tripped, fell down flat, <laughs> and I slid over the, the platforms, completely soaked, crawled over to the other end while people were laughing and cheering. And I was just like completely soaked over there. But... <laughs> I think in the end, it's quite funny that this uh, happened in China and it's 40 degrees. So what does it matter? You will dry up in the end anyway. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this story as well. And thank you for watching. I'm glad you're safe and you didn't get sick. I assume it's time to tell our story, our funniest story. Yeah, I guess she needed a scapegoat for this one. She's going to blame me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a lot of funny stories, we will tell you later, but this one is something that I can believe you, definitely. Yeah, definitely it's my fault, but go ahead, <laughs> I know how, how to defend myself. <laughs> okay, it was our very first uh, anniversary and we booked a trip to Amsterdam and everything seemed fine, yeah? Everything. Yeah, we went to the airport, it was pretty smooth. Bruno actually was in charge to take uh, to bring the passports and I didn't check. He took three different passports. Yeah, I was at home. She saw, can you pick up the passports? And I'm like, sure. I just picked up the three passports because she had two. Uh, one with the visas and one without. Yeah, because like uh, I got my visa when I had the other passport, then that passport expired and I had to renew it. I didn't renew my visa because my visa still was valid. Then I had to travel with two passports. Yes. Anyway, then he said that he has three passports and everything is fine. We went very early at the airport and actually, yeah, because we were leaving the UK, uh, they don't really do passport checks when you're leaving the country. Uh, so we just got in. Because we did the online check-in and I also asked the um, airline, was EasyJet, I think. I said, do you want to check my passport and my visa? And they said, no, 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 we will check it. When at the uh, gate, at the gate. Yeah. Uh, actually, it was one of the first times they did that. They yeah. were like, We go to the desk, and they're like, Yeah, yeah, there's no need for us to check your passports, just go to the gate directly. And we're like, Okay, so we went through security, went to get some food. Then it was almost time to board the plane, right? And yes, we went to the gate. And I was waiting for him to get uh, to give my passports, and he gave me two passports, and we had to show it. And I showed my new passport, which was fine, but then the old one, uh, I was just going through it, and I couldn't find the visa, and I was like, kind of panicking. It was so hard, and I was like, my visa is not there. And he was and like, I was like, how can it not be there? Your visa is just like this is your other passport. 
<laughs> and I'm like, there must be the visa in there. No, this is not the right passport. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean it's not the right passport? Yeah, it was a few moments, but it felt like a, yes, <laughs> yes for me. And I was like, no, because then I saw the visa for Saudi Arabia, which was like ages ago. And I was like, no, this is a very, very old passport, you do. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? Yes, it's an old passport. No, but this is the very, very old passport. And I was like, how many passports do you have? I mean, they were expired. It's not the passport that I had. Yeah. And anyway, they didn't let us board the plane. He could go. He didn't need yeah, the visa. Okay, He's yeah. Italian. I'm Iranian. And yeah, and we had to just stay there. But you know, we officially we're out of UK. Which but, never happened before. I mean, you're in the departure lounge, but you have to get back in. And we were like, is it even possible? So they said, don't worry, someone will come and pick you up and bring you to the border. Yeah, he, uh, he came and he brought us at the border. And at the border, we had another issue because... They wanted uh, to see her visa, of course. <laughs> yeah, to, to enter the country. My UK visa also was in the passport that we left at home. And in the new passport, literally, I had nothing, not a stamp, not visa, nothing. It was so new. And the officer at the border asked me some questions. And she was kind, to be honest. She was really kind. And we kind of explained why we couldn't board the plane. And she asked if we are married and where we live and everything. And we finally entered to the country again. And I went home. I uh, I asked him. I actually him. sent her home because I was like, it's your fault that you didn't tell me you have three passports, not two. So you go back all the way back home. I'm going to stay here with my laptop doing something at the airport, waiting for you to come back and book another flight. We actually booked another flight in the afternoon, late afternoon. We, went, we arrived there a few hours later. But it was the day of our anniversary. Yeah, it I was the day. people telling us, oh, happy anniversary. And we're like, yay. Right. Yes. Then uh, actually he was at the airport and he was just texting me because the flight we booked. Also, I didn't want to miss that one. I had to run and two trains to get home and take a passport. But finally, we arrived in Amsterdam. And at the Amsterdam, border when they check our passport and because we showed our uh, marriage certificate I think yeah. they suddenly when they wanted to say okay go in instead of saying go in, uh, go in he said by the way happy anniversary mm -hmm. and yeah. that time we really laughed and we forgot about our day it was fun I hope you enjoy our story we have a lot of stories maybe another time we will tell you if you have funny stories just Share it with us in the comment section. I would like to read it. But for now, stay home, stay safe. See you in the next video.